Water is a basic necessity for living, whether for cleaning, washing, or drinking. It is essential for daily human survival. On the program this week, I bring you stories on the various water intervention projects undertaken by Governor Darius Ishaku. My name is Nelson Eta. Join me as I take you on a journey to discover water in Taraba. The three global awards on water given to Governor Daros Ishaku by the World Council on Water attest to the immense impact of his administration on water development in Taraba State, which has elevated the sufferings of residents in assessing clean and portable water. The efforts have also reduced outbreak of waterborne diseases in the state. You have a very strong passion for water development in the state. There's really hardly any local government or community in Taraba State that you haven't sunk a borehole. And even down here in Jalingo, the ongoing 5 million litre water project. Tell me, Your Excellency, how did you come about such magnificent architectural design that is a compass of a water reservoir and a recreational facility? When I resumed here, there was no water in the city. No water. There was no water in the taps. I'm sure for a couple of months or years. No running water. This government house where you're meeting me, they were trucking water to bring here every morning. And that is the water I used for two days, they'll fetch again. I mean, there was no water here. The first thing we had to get our rigs, boho rigs. Luckily, we have some boys who were trained by Jaka. I came and met them on ground. They were trained, but they were doing nothing. And I say, wow, this is the place I want. Mm. I now pump in all that was required. I now increase their number. I now increase their training. So as they're drilling in the north, they're drilling in the south, they're drilling in the central. And we only go to do our boreholes during the peak of the dry season. Because when you hit water, you are sure that water will be there all year all right. round. So we continue. And I keep pumping. No matter what, once even there is no money, I force money out of the rock. And that was how we kept on. And we didn't sleep. And I was pushing them to breaking point. Fortunately for me, they were a very good, hard-working team. Mm. And that was how we were. And so when the U.S. ambassador visited us once, and I, he asked me that he has been to all the 35 states, this was the 36 states. And what he saw here, what, what he had envied, that most states should be doing. And he asked me what he can do for me. Mm. Oh, la, la. I said, me? Since I became a governor, people are, I'm giving. Today is the first time somebody is asking to give me. So I started praying. <laughs> I said, God, here I am. <laughs> the first time I'm a governor, somebody is asking me what you give me. So I sang for him. He said, you must be a funny man. <laughs> I can imagine the scenario. He said, give me anything you want to. So he said, it seems you have passion for water. I will help you. And they help us with a little grant. And so, and that is how we got into e-wash. And that was water, a 
environment and sanitation. Your Excellency, did the federal government play any role in helping us? No, no, no. Triple no. No one finding of federal government is in this water project. Mm. The same question was asked when I was in Dakar. Where did you get this huge money to build a 5.3 million liters of water? I said, I loaned it. She loaned the money. I said, yes. And let me tell you, the most difficult thing that I experienced when I was going to this water, Jalingo town, where you sit here, there is no basement water. There is no water underground. Now that it's rainy season, you will see all those streams filled with water. Give it one month after rains, they are dried like rock. The formation of this place is so bad like that of Nairobi. And so, we did in where you went to Karofi Field, where you went to the, the intake, it was a consultant who, who did the survey, retired, he's in Israel, we trust him there. He did it 30 years, 20 something years ago. We trust him. He was the one who gave us the data. And you know, immediately we got there, exactly the point he gave us, we struck water. Otherwise, the whole of this place, there was no water. The only place I could get a very large quantity of water was to go to River Benue, which is in Lao. That's about 26, 27 kilometers. I didn't have the money to take water 26 kilometers to bring it here. The next one, if you are going to Zing, once you cross that bridge, you turn right, uh, right as if you are going to Zing, you will see one large pond there. Yes, sir. Now, during any season like this, it's like a lake. So, that was the other alternative because it's close to the city. But that one too will take almost like seven, eight kilometers pipe to get there. When I gave the engineers the bill I got, whoo, exorbitant. Wow. So I now go, we went to Karofi field, we went to that, and when we struck down, we got water there. And that guy had told us that if we work hard on that, we will get enough quantity of water underground. All we did is to go deeper, create our treatment plant, create our reservoir there. That place has a reservoir. So we collect the water there, we treat the water there, all we do, we pump it now to the tanks. And God has so blessed this city that you have mountains everywhere you look. So we beautify it by putting some <laughs> tanks there. On it. All the place. So once we take the water there, just like the one you are seeing in this artistically dancing uh, water tower, the water goes on gravity. Mm. We don't need to pump mm. it. Mm. We save money from power. SCC is one of the best water contractors in Nigeria. And they did a fantastic job. And they are doing it. You can see the casting of that complicated tower they are doing there. They did the same thing. But it's buried on the ground. Where the intake is the problem. The biggest work is where you get the water into the intake. Otherwise, all these tanks you are seeing all over the place will be empty. Mm. Mm. But they have all been connected, all of them. Even to some plots where there are no layout yet. We crossed this to, to Kona. Kona is like eight kilometers. It's another district of this town. And then we've taken some far away school, the University of Agri, to where there's no residence yet. It's just a plan land. But there are water there, already waiting for people to come and meet them. Your Excellency, thank you so much for the privilege, Your Excellency. Thanks. Thank you. Apart from the cold, mild, and temperate weather in Taraba State, as well as its vast rich soil for farming, the state is also blessed with immense water bodies. But for decades, 
Residents of Taraba State had no access to potable water before the advent of the administration of Governor Darius Ishaku. This was blamed on factors like long-term neglect by past administrations, dilapidated infrastructure, and rising population. Many residents became their own water corporation by digging boreholes to sell water to neighbors. A fallout of this was the distribution of unclean, contaminated, and polluted water. These also gave rise to outbreak of various diseases, causing health emergency in the hospitals. When His Excellency came on board, uh, water was a problem. And the citizens or the people were fetching water from the stream directly, which you know it can either, if we are going scientifically, we say it's a solid water because it is having a lot of contamination. His Excellency now said, if you give good potable water or good drinking water to people, he became passionate about it and started the issue of putting on ground infrastructure that will give good water. That is where it came about the boreholes. He has been consistently funding the operations and maintenance of water supply to the people of Taraba State. If you go to the hospitals and health facilities now and check the records, you will see that water-related diseases have reduced drastically as a result of supplying good water to the people. So, what did Governor Ishaku do differently to solve this water-related health epidemic in the state? In his inauguration speech, he said he is aware that um, providing potable water to the people will go a long way in solving half of the problems of health in Taraba because water is central to good living. You need water for bathing, you need for water for drinking. If you drink good quality water, you are more healthy. So that is the underlying uh, drive that uh, has caused government to embark on this Jajanti project because we know if we're able to supply good water to the people, it will result in improved uh, health, improved standard of living of the people, and then the productivity of the people will be enhanced. Um, when the government took over in 2015, there was no taps flowing in the cities in Taraba. But since he came on board... As a short-term solution to the water crisis in the state, Governor Ishaku sunk boreholes in various communities across the state as part of his campaign strategies. The whole thing I did in this state came from what I saw on the ground that was lacking. I campaigned, then in my campaign I sunk more than 15, 20 boreholes. There's a village here, it's just about uh, three or so kilometers from the town here. It's part of the greater city. I went there, people had no water. Unfortunately for me, I went with my bishop. And I went with uh, rappers and things to give them as a gift. And they, he said no. He asked the people, do you want rappers? And they said no. What do you want? They said water. Hmm. I said water, I said yes. You don't want this rapper? They said, no, 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 you can go with your rappers. So I said, okay, I'm not going with the rappers. Take the rappers. In 14 days, you have a borehole here with an overhead tank. Mm. They thought it was the normal politicians, their talk. And so second day, they were drilling borehole there. Before two weeks, they have a water tank. This he sustained immediately after winning the governorship election in 2015. Governor Ishaku ensured that dilapidated equipment within the water supply chain were immediately repaired. And in just two weeks, residents of Jalingo had access to clean and potable water for the first time in decades. When we came in, uh, we saw that there have been problems of 
good quality water. And uh, the government engaged in providing portable drinking water to most of the settlements uh, within urban and rural areas. And so a lot of boreholes were uh, drilled in so many locations and local government headquarters. And uh, aside the boreholes that provided water for the rural area, he saw also that uh, there is a need because the impression that anyone that comes into the state capital has about Tarawa State is the general impression that he will give, even in the rural area. Mm -hmm. So he decided to embark on this giant project of building a five million liter. Mm -hmm. And it is not only the, 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 the overhead time, but there's also uh, the, the water field at the Karafi and Magami that brings water to feed the overhead tank. But like every major project, funding is a major challenge. But with the support and collaboration of the United States Embassy in Nigeria and other international development partners, the governor sustained his vision of providing clean and portable water to the people of Taraba State. Another roadblock to the administration's try to provide clean water to the people was lack of enabling laws to strengthen operations and development of the sector in the state. His Excellency, in his uh, volution, felt that there is need for us to give our people the dividend of democracy. And he reflected deeply and he felt that, okay, Taraba State is a rural state. Therefore, we cannot expose our people to unhygienic environment. Mm -hmm. It was on this note that he brought a bill on water sanitation and prohibition on open defecation, which this house has only have passed. And that have reduced the maintenance of some of these diseases in Taraba State. It may interest you to know that recently uh, there is an outbreak of cholera in my own local government. But immediately I moved a motion on the urgent public importance and the need for the Taraba State government to switch into action to control the manner. And within 24 hours, they responded, and today, it is a thing of the past. The uh, law on the uh, water sanitation is one of the landmark law we passed. And today, we can tell you that our governor has been conferred with the title of the best waterman of the year, three times. Recently, his answer just returned back from Portugal, where the World Bank have called on him to come and deliver lectures on how Africa will benefit from water project and because the youth Arabas is to benchmark that. So we are proud to tell you that we are doing very well in this state. Then like magic, the hope of the people came alive as they now have access to clean and potable water. There are two water fields in Jalingo, the state capital. Karofi water field and Magami water field. The Karofi water field with 17 boreholes generates about 1,200 cubic meters of water, which is about 1.2 million liters of water supplied to the Sabongari area of Jalingo, the State University and the School of Science in Kofing District. The Magami water field, on the other hand, provides water for people in Jalingo North and mile six districts. What makes my day is when I'm out there and now my people are out there to welcome me because they're happy that I provided water or they're happy that I brought them electricity or they're happy that their farm produce is yielding well. And so I will dance and dance with them. I will rejoice with them because I am truly happy. <laughs> Get him, 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 get him,
Due to the various interventions undertaken by Governor Darius Ishaku in the area of water, today, Tarabans have access to clean and portable water. The people are happy and the governor is fulfilled. Until next, we want to bring you more on the exploit of Governor Darius Ishaku. I just want to say, keep discovering Taraba. Thank you.